This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbilmec, a bit of planner, Camp Power, and Bill Component. Yo, what's up? We are now sitting in the Seeker 7X. This is a 100 kilowatt hour performance all-wheel drive. It charges incredibly fast. I'm going to show you guys how fast it is. But before we start, things are going to happen so fast here. But you saw in the range test, I went to Ionity, the 400 kilowatt Albertronic charger, and I did a charging session there. But then I actually found a 500 kilowatt charger downtown Oslo. There are not that many around Norway, actually. Uh, there's a 480 kilowatt truck charger recently opened uh, at Klett, uh, Trondheim, right? Uh, but um, at least the 500 kilowatt charger, a Neo, delivered all the power this car could take. Uh, on spec, it's supposed to be 480 kilowatt. That's what I heard from Seeker. I managed to get 415. You're going to see it soon. And then I compared against some e-tron GT and then the previous generation G9 and also the Q6 e-tron. So now let's just roll the tape. Bam! So you see that the Albertronic session goes a little bit faster in the beginning, but then we hit 415, 416 briefly on the on the new charger, and then it still can maintain that. But but at 20 percent, okay, then it starts throttling. But it doesn't just plummet like a Tesla. It can still maintain over 300 kilowatt. It's just insanely fast. The other cars below there, whatever. You can just see what's going on now. But you're gonna look at the uh, Seeker now. It's just. Wow, it is so fast. It about to hit 40% already. Actually, the top, the Albertronic session hit 40%. And then the Edron GT, way more expensive car. And also the Q6 is not even at 40%. And then the G9, okay, that's the previous G9. Yes, eventually we're going to try the, the new shit G9 from x -Bang. But wow, look at that. Oh, 50% already at 8 minute mark. Yeah, you can look in the blue, one of the blue line. Right? Usually the, the Ionte session, they will show you the time. This is just unheard of that you charge for okay now okay what about 10 minutes wait for the 10 minute mark 10 minutes 60 percent huh you know when i do 1000 kilometer challenge i tend to charge to 60 percent because that usually that yields the best 1000 kilometer time and that means you you only have 10 minutes for the time you plug it in and the car handshake and then you have some time for toilet and maybe food or whatever and then you can drive another 200 kilometers at least on 60 percent right or if you wait a couple of minutes you go 75 percent how about that oh, it is so fast it goes so fast I'm, i don't even have time to talk here normally you know this is 10x speed maybe i should slow it down to only 5x speed so I have time to show you guys what's going on, but we already hit 80% out of 15 minutes. Incredible! Faster than the Germans. The Germans, they have lost the battle. Wow. Okay, well, XG, wait, wait, let me see. Uh, I have to status check here. Okay, uh, well, the, the Seeker is leading. And then, okay, Eatron GT, there, hit 80%. Wow. After 18 minutes, the slow clap to, to the very expensive Eatron GT. What about Q6? Um, Q6. Wait, Q6 is the slowest? What? Even the even the previous generation G9 is charging faster than the Q6? Whoa, oh wow, really? Wait, I missed it. The, the Seeker already hit 90%. Double win for Seeker there, wow. And then what about the other cars? Um, well, Etron GT is a second place right now. What about the G9 is coming in schnell? And that's even the previous gen. Uh-oh, Etron GT speed starts plummeting. Uh-oh, will the G9 actually go before the, Q <laughs> the, the Etron GT? But meanwhile, the Seeker is going for 100% the humiliation run, but now it goes quite slow towards the end. Uh oh, maybe the other cars can finally catch it to 100% at least. We'll see. Uh, but uh, now, okay, Etron GT hit 90% first, and then but G9 is right behind. But the Q6, wow, one of the most expensive cars in here are charging. Well, actually, no, the Etron GT is the most expensive. Okay, second most expensive car here, the Q6. Is charging uh, the the slowest. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. G9 hit 90%. Uh, well, I'm not sure what the heck is going on now. Oh well. Okay. Um, um, Seeker is about to hit 100% before Q6 hits 90. Really? Really? Are we have we come to that point where the Germans are humiliated by the Chinese here? Whoa, man. There. Okay. Well, at least Q6 hit 90% before Seeker hit <laughs> 99. Wow. Wow, look at that. And now it's just a battle between the G9, the previous gen G9 and the Etron GT. Which car will go to 90% first? Okay, let's close. We'll see now. But both car charts kind of slow towards the end. But actually to 100%, you see that the, the, the Seeker doesn't go that fast. Only limited to around 20 kilowatt-ish, right? So... But again, you see that the Albertinic session is a bit faster than the, the new Gen 3 session. I'm not sure why. Could be because of thermal, or I'm not sure there. Albertinic hit 100% after 38 minutes. And then, oh, G9 is at 97%. He's on a good second place here. 
Wow, is it gonna beat the e-tron GT even? Huh? This is wow, double humiliation. The Chinese won double win and even with the old gen g9 wow really wait wait wait, wait. It's, it's ain't over until it's over right okay um but this is insane that these cars can re hit 100 percent before 45 minutes there there, there g9 ha, ha, ha. the chinese is like lol lol what you got now germans okay now let's look at the johnny curve so here I include the red line, that's the 400 kilowatt uh, Alpetronic charger or the Ionity I used. And it, okay, it's kind of weird, okay, it, it has a lower maximum speed, but then this dip here, is that a thermal dip or what, what's up with that? And then it goes up a bit. Um, this was driven in the wet, maybe the battery was a bit warm and had to throttle. But then the Neo run was slightly colder run, but still within the uh, optimizer, whatever you call it, preheating didn't want to run. So it was already warm enough. So there it goes a bit higher, but then, it, yeah, and then it had this line here, right? But then, okay, I need to explain something here. Here, this, what the heck is this? Well, um, it seems like the, the Alpitronic was, tr uh, like, it was ramping it faster. I saw this on the on the Neo charger screen that it all allocated around 240 kilowatt, right? And the car requested that much, and then it allocated slightly more. I think at one point the car w requested more power than the charger allocated, but eventually, yeah, the charger allocated 480 kilowatt or something. Not sure if I saw 500, but and then then so this slow ramp up here actually uh, led to that. It was slower the whole battle here even though they more or less follow the same line right and this could explain why tesla charges so fast because tesla is really fast at ramping up see most of the cars here they actually ramp up quite slow except for the q6 e-tron so okay okay so that's this, this line here yes but okay what you guys seen today or at least on the charging session and also the line here is that it, it seems like there is no big advantage if at all to go for 480 or 500 kilowatt charger charging at 400 kilowatt on um, the, the new ion sites or actually circle k they also wrote that roll out many 400 kilowatt charger seems to be good enough but i, I even believe that 350 kilowatt charger i haven't tested it uh, that you have on ionti maybe it will flatten out the curve and it there won't won't be any weird uh, thermal throttling right uh, and then maybe overall the charging time won't be that much different and then okay what do we have here down here we have um, g9 previous gen e9 still quite fast but then it throttles and then the e-tron gt though has a nice flat curve but look how slow the e-tron gt ramps up this is also what i mesh uh, i noticed it wasn't just a one-time thing because during 1000 km challenge, the e-tron GT was surprisingly slow or disappointingly slow compared to what you expect because, you, okay, on paper here, you see it has a nice flat curve, yes, but uh, this slow ramp up here actually makes it lose a lot of time. So it would be better if they can ramp up faster, right? I'm not sure if it's possible, but it is possible because many other cars are doing it. And then the last here, blue, uh, sorry, the, 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 yellow line here is the q6 e-tron so this is some of the fastest cars out there that can charge right we could compare maybe against the meb meb platform would be down here somewhere yeah 185 kilowatt and then throttles tesla is just zoop 250 here briefly and then blah, 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 and then tesla will be down here somewhere right so so yeah the seeker is just so fast but the crazy thing is that this is not the fastest charging ev out there x -Bank. Uh, X9 is charging at uh, 550 kilowatt, and also the new gen G6 X Bank and G9 is charging faster. I don't remember how much. And also, um, uh, Neo, yeah, and I have Neo behind me here. Neo, next gen, the ES8, the, the, the third generation on the NT3 platform, is <laughs> 925 volt, 700 kilowatt is the 5C battery. All of these cars that I talk about now, they are Chinese. The fastest uh, um, European car, well, we have a BMW Neue Klasse, uh, a new iX3, 400 kilowatt. 
Yeah, well, how, how fast was the CLA again, the Mercedes? Hmm. But okay, it seems like when it comes to the charging game, the Chinese, man, they're way ahead of the Germans. And then Tesla? Oh, well, we have, okay, Cybertruck. Yeah, Cybertruck can peak at 425 kilowatt briefly. And then blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.